Hello, and welcome to The Artist Pivot, a weekly conversation with artists about their current pivot, past pivots, and every pivot in between. I am your host, Ayana Major Bay, an actress who wants to educate, empower, and celebrate artists so they have no option but to thrive. On this episode, I am joined by actor and artist entrepreneur coach, J. Nicole Ralph. As one of the top 2% of actors in the industry and as a powerful coach, J. Nicole Ralph loves helping others become the actors and artist entrepreneurs that they are meant to be. Prior to the pandemic, J. Nicole was living her dream of performing on Broadway and touring around the world for the past several years in the Book of Mormon, while also working on several star-studded award-winning films alongside Adam Sandler, Whoopi Goldberg, Jerry Seinfeld, Rosario Dawson, and Yara Shahidi, just to name a few. She also created her own comedic series called Working Out the Kinks, streaming on Black Oak TV, that not only makes you laugh, but also uses hair as a vehicle to explore and educate on the differences between Black and white culture. Additionally, Jay Nicole is an executive producer on the American Black Film Festival feature film selection, Lola, the first African-American female boxing movie starring Tasia V. Simpson. During the pandemic, Jay Nicole became a certified life coach and theta healer. And her mission is to carry out the legacy of entertaining while empowering and educating, a legacy left to her by her mother and grandparents to whom she gives thanks and honor. For without them, she would not be the woman she is today. We discuss resistance, resilience, and the power of knowing there is better to come if you say yes. Here's our conversation. All right, y'all. So today on the podcast, I am so excited, like, Really excited to say that joining me is my friend, Miss J. Nicole Ralph. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so excited to be here, too. Thank you for having me. You are so very welcome. You're so very welcome. And so now, you know, in season two, I have been avoiding the question, how are you? Because it's such a loaded question. Mm -hmm. So my opening question, or actually it's a dual question to you, is one, how does your soul feel today? And two, how are your hydration levels? Like, have you had enough water today? Oh, wow. Um, I love this. This is so interesting and different. How does my soul feel today? My soul is full of, of love. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's great. Um, I am full of, it's full of excitement, um, about the possibilities. Um, Mm. so yeah, there's a little, there's a hint, there's a hint of anxiety, but mainly Mm -hmm. full of excitement and love. Yes. And Mm -hmm. hydration levels, I haven't had any water yet today, so thank you for the reminder. (laughs) (laughs) You're welcome. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. Everybody drinking water. (laughs) Because that's the thing. That's what we can control. Like, we can notice what our soul feels like and then also go, hmm, my water intake is not on par. Let me fix that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And that's, you know, why I ask those questions. Um, (laughs) But I'm excited to have you on because you truly are an artist that has pivoted long before COVID and long before what our industry looks like right now. And I know you consider yourself like an artist entrepreneur. And I would love to dive into that and talk about that. And, you know, I made my little notes. So I have... You know, Nicole, y'all, has been around the country. She's been on Broadway, and she's also a producer, and she's a coach. And now she's also moved to L.A., used to live in New York, is now in L.A., also a certified life coach and theta healer. Like, oh, 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 also she has a comedic web series out called Working Out the Kinks. So, like, we got a lot to cover, Nicole. J. Nicole, we got a lot to cover. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) So let's start with, What was your life like as an artist before the pandemic? Sure, sure. So before the pandemic, um, immediately before the pandemic, I was on the tour with uh, the Book of Mormon. I had left the Broadway production, was doing the touring production. And we were, when the pandemic hit, we were in LA. We had been here for a couple months Mm -hmm. and 
um, that's actually what prompted me to move back to LA is because during those couple months, I just fell in love with LA and wanted to come back. Um, but yeah, so I was in the Book of Mormon. I had been with the Book of Mormon for about three years. And while I was doing Book of Mormon, I was also uh, producing my show, Working Out the Kinks. Um, it, I mean, it pretty much had already been produced. So we were doing more of the the marketing and all of that. Like we got picked up by a digital network. So it streams on Black Oak TV, mm-hmm. um, which is super blessing. And so doing um, marketing and, and, and um, appearances and things for that as well. So okay. yeah, that was my life before the pandemic. Yes, yes, before it. So now with that, I'd like to ask you with working out the kinks, when did you have that idea? Because that, in essence, you know, starting to create your own work and not depending on just auditions to find work is a pivot in itself going, yeah, I'll still audition for this person's show, but I'm going to go create my own thing. So when did that idea kind of come about? Yeah, that came about... Um. That came about back in 2015 when, 2014, 2014, mm-hmm. when I, um, I had hit like absolute rock bottom in my life, Ayana. I mm-hmm. had, my family had just come and rescued me from an abusive relationship. I was in an emotionally and physically abusive relationship and it had gotten to the point where he almost killed me. And mm-hmm. so my family came and rescued me. And so I no longer had a job, no income coming in. I no longer had um, a place to live or my own place to live, I should say, or a car or anything. And so my uh, uncle came and got me. And so I was living with my aunt and uncle, but sleeping on the floor Mm -hmm. and had PTSD, couldn't really sleep at all Mm -hmm. because every time I closed my eyes, I saw this man about to lay his hands on me. And so at that point in my life, uh, but I knew that that I knew that that was not for me. I knew that that's not what God had for me. And I realized that at that point that there was something within me that needed to Mm -hmm. be addressed, that needed to be fixed. Because like for me to even have been in that situation, to allow myself to stay in that situation for that long, something was wrong with me or something was broken within me. And Mm -hmm. so I started to try to search out for help, you know, um, through listening to audios and going to self-help seminars and uh, reading books and doing meditations and things of that sort and started getting offers to have complimentary coaching sessions with life coaches and Mm -hmm. doing that sort of thing. And um, I finally got with, uh, and during, okay, so during some of those sessions, the question kept coming up, like, well, what do you really want to do? What do you really want to do with your life? And like, what, what is it, you know, what is the ultimate goal? What is the dream? Mm -hmm. And so um, what kept coming to mind was I want to be like a Tyler Perry. I want to be like an Oprah. Um, And I want to be able to not only be in shows and productions, but I want to have creative control and be able to create the stories that I want to tell. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like the beginning, the seed. Um, And so when I finally was able to kind of get myself back into acting, because I had taken a hiatus from acting during that time, Mm -hmm. um, I realized that I wanted to start doing, I went back into theater because I was my bread and butter, but I wanted to start doing more TV and film. And so I, but I didn't have, to get into TV and film, you got to have a reel, you got to have clips, you got to have footage, right? And I didn't have Mm -hmm. any footage. So, because all the work I had done never gave me my footage. <laughs> mm, okay. And so, and, and I, yeah. And so I was like, okay, what am I going to do? So, um, somebody had given me the idea, well, you know, wh- you could wait for that footage to come in. You could hound those people for your footage, or you could produce your own reel, you know, write some scenes and then produce your own reel. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Then I can be like whatever character I want to be. I can be the lead, you know, like that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. And then it occurred to me, well, if I'm going to put all this time, energy, and money into producing a reel, I might as well like go for the goal, the real goal, which is to produce my own show, which Mm -hmm. I identified as my goal anyway. So 
And then I'll still have the footage too. So it's <laughs> right. a win-win. So that's where that came about. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it and 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 start doing what I really, really want to do, which is show running mm-hmm. as well as, you know, being the star in my own show. And so that's where that came from. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. I love it. Yes. And so, you know, that was a pivot, a voluntary pivot that you made yes. in your life as an artist that you were like, okay, here it is. Like, like you're, you're right. The person was like, oh, produce your own reel. And you're like, okay, but if I'm going to do all this, why not produce my own show? And then I could take footage from that because it's my show. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I, I love that. I love that. You're like, ah, yeah, I'm going to go for the gold. We're just going to produce the whole show. So before the pandemic, yes, you were multi hyphenated as they now say um with being in someone else's show but also producing your own and being a producer and being a showrunner and so then when the pandemic hit i know that you also added a couple of different branches if you will to yourself as an artist and as an entrepreneur and so tell me a little bit about what happened you know with the year that was 2020 yes yes ma'am so i was as I, as I was performing in Book of Mormon and other shows before, prior to Book of Mormon, I was already coaching other artists, young, young artists to be specific, um, mm-hmm. to help them to get started in the industry and guide them. And um, I myself, like I had said before, um, I had started working with that coach, that life coach. Mm-hmm. Um, well, oh, maybe I didn't say that. So as I was, you know, trying out different complimentary coaching sessions, I finally stumbled upon a coach that I was like, oh, I need to continue working with this person. So then I started mm. working with that person and um had and and that and he became my life coach. And so um yeah, so I was life coaching and then I was also coaching young artists um to, you know, find their way in the industry. Mm-hmm. And so when the interesting thing is right before the pandemic hit or right before it was, I guess, recognized as a pandemic, like around January of 2020, my coach was like, you know what, you know, you're already coaching and really what you're doing with these young artists is you're life coaching them. So you might as well just become certified in life coaching and then you can life coach anybody. (laughs) And (laughs) At first, I was very resistant to it. I was like, that's not what I want to do with my life. Like I am mm-hmm. an actor and a producer and I'm just coaching mm-hmm. on the side. Like I was very resistant to it. Um, okay. But he talked to me and was like, you know, that would really deepen your practice, you know, just as in your own life coaching, you know, you don't necessarily have to practice it, you know, if you don't want to, you know, but the 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 training to be a life coach will help you better with the coaching that you're receiving. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. And it will help you to better coach your artists, even if you don't want to necessarily life coach them. And so I was like, okay, okay, that's cool. So I did it. And then the pandemic hit and I was like, oh, shoot. Okay. Um, And so as you know, the months went on and and it became clear that this pandemic was not ending anytime soon. It was kind of like, wow, well, thank goodness I did this (laughs) Uh because now uh I'm leaning into this because this is something I can do while we're in a pandemic since I can't be on the stage and I, and, mm-hmm. and I can't even be on the screen, you right. know? So, um, yeah, so I did that. And then, and so, and so I d- went hard after I got my certification, I went hard with, um, building up my business and in doing so I got interested in other modalities because getting certified as a life coach, I got, um, I I learned different modalities, different types of meditations and clearings and things. Um, And so I got interested in, in, in even going deeper with some of those modalities. And one of those was theta healing. And so um, at this point now I have multiple coaches. I have, I had a life coach. I had an acting business coach, acting coach, a mindset coach, um, just really, really investing in myself, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. business coach. And so uh, my business coach also did theta healing work with us and so invited me to become certified in theta healing. And I was really interested in that. And so I did that as well. So now I'm a certified life coach and theta healer. And um, I have been, it's interesting because I, um, 
I've been I've been coaching artists to help them to thrive in the industries, so whether that's just getting started or if they've plateaued and need to mm-hmm. get unstuck and get to the next level. I, mm-hmm. I help with that, particularly on the mindset side, but also strategically, you know, with with the business side of the the industry and all of that. And then as as I was able to build my business up, I began to start helping other entrepreneurs to build their business, create, launch, and, and, and build their business to, to be a profitable business as well. Mm -hmm. And so then I was like, Oh, it would be so amazing if I could help artists do this so that they can be making money and funding their career on their own terms. And so Mm -hmm. that's kind of been my latest branch of my um of my business is combining the two and coaching other artist entrepreneurs so that they are able to have that financial and time freedom as well. Right. Right. Ooh, amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I'm here for it. Uh, amazing. And now with that, so I have two follow-up questions. One about the resistance, which I just was like, oh, yep, I can relate to that. When someone tells you, you're like, mm, no, it's not what I want to do. It's not, you know, but do I want to ask, was there anything else that you had resistance to um, prior or even after that moment with your coach that you're like, I, but I don't want to do that. But then you did it and you were like, oh, see, I should have just been open from the beginning and now I'm <laughs> glad I did it. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, that happened with the life coaching certification. It also happened with the Theta Healing certification. My, my business oh, okay. coach invited me to become a certified Theta Healer. And at first I was like, no, I'm good. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. And I got all this other <laughs> stuff going on. Like, I'm good. And then as we got deeper into the work, um, he invited me again and it just seemed, it seemed into a, to be in alignment. And, and I'll be honest, Ayana, it actually mm-hmm. ended up kind of being a catalyst or a fire under my ass. I hope I'm allowed to say ass on this show. Mm-hmm. You um, did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a fire under my ass to move to LA, uh, uh, ironically. And I'll tell you how, like, um, mm-hmm. So, so the Theta Healing Certification, I renewed my, I renewed my, um, my coaching package with my business coach and mm-hmm. upgraded because I was just getting such great results with him and I wanted to continue and get even faster and better results with him as well. And right. with the upgraded package, it include be, um, getting um, certified as a Theta Healer. And so he, so I was like, well, I mean, it's part of the package. I might as well do it. Like I like Theta Healing, so <laughs> I might as well do it. And mm-hmm. the, um, the Theta Healing workshop or conference, if you will, was in Kansas City. So mm-hmm. I had left New York um, to go back home to Ohio because my father had caught COVID and mm-hmm. I was there to take care of him and make sure he was okay and, and um, all of that. And I was there for several months and then finally he got to a place where he could be on his own. I mean, he's still dealing with some symptoms. He's got those long haul symptoms, mm-hmm. um, but he is to a place where he's able to be independent. And so I was able, it was time like, okay, you are able to leave now, but here's again, where resistance showed up. Like it was like, okay. And I started procrastinating like, well, I don't have to move to LA just yet because mm. I can stay here a little longer and save even more money. And you know, like, yes, like things yes. started coming up. It was like, well, but I don't think, I don't know if dad is a hundred percent ready for me to leave yet. You know, like little yes. things that kept making me procrastinate. And mm-hmm. so finally this theta healing, uh, workshop came up, uh, and it was like, um, in Kansas city. And so from Ohio to LA, Kansas city is directly on the route. And I want, and I knew that I wanted to drive cross country. I didn't want to fly cause I wanted to be able to bring all my stuff with me if I'm moving. Right. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I was like, well, damn, it would be silly for me to go to Kansas City for the State of Healing Workshop and then come back to Ohio. I've been Mm -hmm. saying I'm going to move to L.A. I might as well just go to Kansas City with all my stuff, do the workshop and then continue on my road to L.A. And sure enough, that's what I did. (laughs) There there it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you had to like push against that resistance. Yep. Yep. So it was, yeah, resistance to moving to L.A. and to the Theta Healing. But I I did. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. You did. You did. And you are better for it. Yep. Yep. So you know? glad I did. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so my my next question would be, this kind of actually will tie into, you know, 
what advice I want to ask you that you would have for artists. But you made a very, very valid point of like, you know, now you don't have to wait for someone else to give you a paycheck to fund your career. You Mm -hmm. don't have to now balance your schedule between working a survival job, as we call it in the business, Mm -hmm. and really doing what you want, which is being available for these auditions or even just producing your own work, even if you just want to be the producer. But you got to have the funds to then produce the work you want. So I would ask you, you know, how does it feel to really, really be in charge of your own income? How important do you feel it is for artists to have charge of that? And then what advice would you give? I know that was loaded. It was, was, yes, three questions there. Okay, so we got, okay, tell me the first one again. I'll go one by one. Yeah, how does it feel? Like, how does it feel to be fully in charge? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So I will, I will say this. It feels, it feels very, um, what's the word? Uh, Freeing. Like Mm. it, it's, it's. It feels good to be able to wake up in the morning and not have to answer to anybody but myself, you know? Mm, yes. Um, like, okay, maybe I have a, a, some meetings scheduled. Maybe I have a class that's at a certain time. But it's like, generally speaking, every day I wake up and make my own schedule. Mm-hmm. And that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And to go back to a job where I have to answer to somebody else and be on somebody else's schedule will probably feel like prison. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so that feels amazing. Um, when, when I see the, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, when I see the money coming to, into my account and also when I see that it's because I am actually helping people and making a difference in people's lives in a way, mm. in a much deeper way than I was when I was just an employee. Mm-hmm. That too feels very empowering and it mm. makes me feel very significant and like I'm making an impact for real, for real. And it's like, I can create my own. It's like, I look in that, in my uh, bank account, it's like, I did that. I created that. It's not like I, somebody else put that in my account. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Yes. Um, I mean, sure, sure. The people that I am coaching, sure, they pay me. So I guess technically you could kind of look at it that way. But it's it's very different than being an employee. It's like I'm I created that, and the whole thing goes into my account versus the majority of it goes to this company, and then I get like Mm -hmm. a A little little percentage cut. cut. Yeah. Uh uh (laughs) Yeah. You know. So and that just goes to manifestation. It's like, wow, Mm -hmm. like I really created this. I really manifested this business that I am able to, to create and fund my lifestyle, which includes Mm -hmm. my career, you know? Mm -hmm. So that feels very freeing. Now I will also be honest and say that it can be scary because, you know, it's like every month it's like, okay, what I got to do this month to make sure that those funds are there because it is all on me. It's not, Mm -hmm. It's it, it isn't like the 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 consistent steady paycheck um, that that may be from a job, you know. Mm-hmm. However, when 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 you make it happen, it is so mm-hmm. exhilarating. It's so um, empowering, and it's at least in my case, it's significantly more than 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 what I would get from your typical uh, nine to five job or survival job, if you will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. 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 And so to follow up with that, in your opinion, how important do you think it is that, you know, artists at least find some type of their own income, if you will? Because not everybody, you know, would want to have their own coaching business. Not everybody would want to fully have another business. Mm -hmm. But how important do you think it is for artists to have at least something, something that is their own? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, like it's I I believe it's as important as it is to you. Like for me, mm, freedom, okay. yes. my two biggest values, I, I learned this early on in my life. My my two biggest values are love and freedom. And mm-hmm. I had capitalized on the love thing, I think, early on. Like I've been doing what I love ever since I was a child. Uh, um mm-hmm. my, my mother had me in the arts and 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 things ever since I was a child, and I've been doing what I love ever since I was a child. And also, and that just doesn't, when I say love, it doesn't just mean what I love to do, but loving other people and receiving Mm -hmm. love and just love in general. Um, Mm -hmm. The freedom thing 
has been a little bit of a challenge. Um, and so now though, it feels like I've kind of, I've gotten there. It's like, okay, mm. now I feel like I'm free for real, for real. Like I'm, I'm really free. And so if that's really important to you, then yeah, then maybe building your own business or side hustle is something that should be important to you. However, mm -hmm. if you're, if, if you have other values like security or structure or something like that, maybe mm -hmm. not, you know, so it really just, it's as important to you as it is important to you. You know, you have to look, you have to look at your own values. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Ooh, that's, yeah. That's kind of like a perfect answer, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, looking at your own values and then pursuing whatever matches those values. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Like, my next question was going to be, what advice do you have? But I think you just answered it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like that, I, I mean, that, I mean, that, yeah, the advice would be to examine your values. Like what, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit of teaching if I might. Um, yes, of course. Me, yeah. um, Go so, ahead. so there are, there are main four needs of the personality that every human has. And mm -hmm. those, those needs are um, certainty, mm -hmm. which is like security, like knowing th uh, that, 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 things are going to be the way they are going to be on a consistent basis. Like I am certain that this is going to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, uncertainty. Everybody also needs uncertainty, which means variety. Like that's why we eat different mm -hmm. foods every day. That's why we go to the movies. That's why we go to amusement parks. You know, we need variety in our life as well. Um, love and connection mm -hmm. is another one. So we all need some form of love connecting to other people, um, whether it, it just be emotional, physical, um, but some sort of love and connection. And then um, significance. We need to feel important or significant in some way. And if, if we are not getting one or more of those, those um, uh, needs, we mm -hmm. will do whatever we have to do to get it. Like mm. even if it's crazy if even if it's self-sabotaging we will do whatever we have to do to get it and so mm -hmm. it is that we as people sometimes depending on our personality type one need may be stronger than the others or maybe two of the needs may be stronger than the others and I realized for myself that the love and connection and the variety the uncertainty are a little stronger for me than the others, mm -hmm. or maybe, or maybe it's that I just naturally have the others fulfilled. Maybe that's what it is. It's just, I naturally right. have the significance fulfilled. I naturally have the certainty fulfilled. And so mm -hmm. for me, I lean more into the variety and the um, love and connection. And mm -hmm. so I say all that to say that, um, look at those needs and see where they're, they're being filled in your life and where you may have a little stronger need in one of those areas. And, mm. and that could help you to identify what your, your strongest values are. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Ooh, yes. That was wonderful. You know, I, I was over here taking notes on my yes. little pad. <laughs> <laughs> you were teaching me. Thank you, sis. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, oh, this was wonderful. This was, I'm so glad I caught you because I know you are busy. I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, she made room in her schedule for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but um, before I let you go, there are two things. So the first one, where can everybody find you? Give me your website, your handles, the Instagram, the Facebooks, the Twitters, every, all of it. Yes, ma'am. You can find J. Nicole Ralph, spelled J-N-Y-C-O-L-E-R-A-L-P as in Paul H., J. Nicole Ralph is where I am everywhere. So that's my website, uh, jnicoleralph.com. That's my handle on Instagram at J. Nicole Ralph. Uh, I'm, that's my name on Facebook, J. Nicole Ralph. Um, yeah, that's where you can find me. I'm pretty much every uh, LinkedIn, wherever, all platforms. Mm -hmm. Not on TikTok or some of the other stuff. But I, <laughs> I know there's just so many now. Yeah. Like I had to, I'm not getting any more than I have now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yes, yes. And yes, like she said, Miss J. Nicole Ralph on all of it. And I don't ever think I've called you anything but J. Nicole Ralph. Like when I greet you and say hello, like I say your full name. And yes. I <laughs> yes. I'm like, is that Miss J. Nicole Ralph down the hallway? 
Yes. I just have to say your full name. I don't know what it is, and I'm never gonna stop it's doing like it. Like Cheryl Lee Ralph. You, know. you gotta say exactly. her full name too. <laughs> exactly. You gotta you gotta say the full name. You have yep. to. You have to. So I just have to say your full name. I just wanted you to know that. Um, <laughs> and so my second thing before I let you go, um, I must say um, this to you, and that is. I acknowledge you, I celebrate you, and I uplift you. Mm. Thank you. I felt that. Thank you so much. I really, You're really so appreciate that. I received yes, that. Course. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Jay Nicole Ralph, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for being open about your experiences. I think more often than not, we do resist, but at some point we have to surrender to that idea, project, or even move that keeps staring us in the face. Thank you again, Jane Nicole Ralph, and thank you for tuning in. I'll speak to you soon. Mm-hmm.